Hey everybody, Dan with Carly here, and today we're talking RAM ball joints. So we get questions all the time. Why are they so expensive? What's the warranty? What are they made out of? How do they operate? How are they different from another premium ball joint or even the factory design? The purpose of this video is to show you how these things go together. Mostly we're going to tell you what they're made out of and how they operate. So let's start with the design of these ball joints. The factory ball joints, there's a hundred videos out there talking about the factory ball joints. In fact, if you go on our webpage and you go on the page for these ball joints, you're gonna see in the product description we do full cutaways of our ball joints first factory. You can see the uh, composite style liner inside the factory ball joints that when those blow out, the ball joints are blown out. It's the reason that they don't last very long, even though they're hardened metal components. So our ball joints eliminate that type of material. I'm not gonna to waste too much time showing you a factory ball joint. Everybody knows they fail. Why isn't super important? The important part is that we've corrected it. I wanna show you how we've corrected it. So our ball joints are a metal on metal design. They maintain the factory design of being a load bearing ball joint lower and a floating kingpin upper. What a floating kingpin means is that from the factory, or from our factory, you actually have about three-eighths of an inch of plunging of this upper ball joint because this only serves as a pivot point. When you install this on the upper, it determines the axis on which the steering knuckle operates, and because the lower isn't perfectly aligned with it, that whole assembly actually raises and lowers. If you've ever installed ball joints on a RAM before, and you have the ball joints in and nothing else with the knuckles on and tightened, and you rotate that knuckle from stop to stop, you're going to watch it raise and lower throughout that stroke. The float in this ball joint is what allows it to do that. So now let's talk about the differences. We know that these ball joints are going to be very similar in design and functionality to the factory ball joints, but what makes them last longer? Now that we're going to talk about the lower ball joint, throw it together, show you what is in it. Um, a lot of people want to know what are these ball joints made out of? What makes this superior to a factory design? Well, unfortunately, we're not going to give away our secret sauce. We went through a lot of money, time, and development. I mean, that's a gross understatement of what we went through. Um, to determine the metallurgy of these ball joints. We have our metals that we use for the pins, for the cups. We have our copper plating, carburizing slash heat treat process that gets us that 30 thousandths case depth, that super deep heat treat to make sure that you don't just have a very hard surface that you're gonna break through in a couple miles. We back these things with a lifetime guarantee. We need to make sure that we're providing you a product that is going to last a lifetime. We've done our homework, case in point. We've saved a few pieces here and there from different metals that didn't work, different heat treats that didn't work, uh, different, I guess, test pieces that we've ripped apart with different heat treats just to uh, check and see what that heat treat does relative to something else. I'm talking 15 years uh, with single samples in this bucket, not representative of everything we've thrown away, but my God, we have plenty of parts here that were very, very expensive, that we've invested a lot of time in, that go in the garbage. They go in the garbage because they're not this. They're not the final result, but they did help us get to this final result. Okay, so now that you know what they aren't, what are they? What makes them different than everything else out there? Well, the metals, like I said, we're not gonna get into, but what I will tell you is by the time that we're done with these, you'll have a nice polished wear surface and the hardness of that wear surface will last millions of miles of turning cycles until you get measurable wear out of these ball joints. That's why we back them with a lifetime guarantee. So how do we put them together to make sure that these things last you as long as the metal will last you? Well, you start with the pin and the cup. Those are the two most important portions. When you set down the weight of that vehicle onto the tires, you push this pin into that cup. That's your load bearing weight surface there. The upper, as we talked about, is a pivot point. It determines the axis on which that knuckle turns, but it doesn't bear any of that vertical load. That's what makes this ball joint so important. Well, equally, when you unload it, that wheel and tire combo, the unsprung weight, pulls that pin away from the wear surface. How do you keep it so that it's preloaded to it all the time so that you're not getting any knocking out of your ball joints? We figured it all out with this ball joint. So when you take a look at the pin and the cup, you've got a cup that's insanely smooth of course it matches the radius of this pin perfectly and then 
In that pin, we've got grooves cut so that the grease can migrate throughout that surface. Now, you're not given a lot of room in the factory design uh, of the axles to be able to put a grease reservoir in there, but we've got plenty of room to, to make that grease last between oil changes when you go ahead and pop grease into these ball joints and service them through that Zerk fitting that we've got on the back. Even the grease port on our ball joints is different. You'll see on the grease port, the indexing of it, you don't just have a Zerk fitting coming straight out the top. The problem with that is you've got your axle U-joint sitting right above it. You can't get a grease nipple on there. So we went ahead and recessed it, shot it out at a 45 degree angle, and in the installation instructions we even tell you which way to orient driver and passenger side so that all you got to do is get under there with a grease gun, pop it in an angle, and you can service these ball joints. We've also added a grease port, a grease evacuation port. So now you can actually pump these ball joints until you see a little ribbon of dirty grease come out and then you're good to go. These ball joints are greased. Some other improvements that we've made to these ball joints, even over our previous generation ball joints, is the retaining system, the way that we keep this pin in the cup. With the release of our 2014 ball joints, we changed the design. We used to use a six bolt upper cap that secured the cap to the body. Well, we now went to a snap ring design. This snap ring design, again, is from our 2014 plus ball joints. We loved it, so we went to it, as it's simple. What makes these ball joints so great is that they're not anything over the top by way of crazy design. Their simplicity makes them as good as they are. So you put the pin in the cup with a little bit of break-in compound, some CV2 grease, which is what we provide you guys in the box when you buy these ball joints. Once you do that, you pop in the bronze upper race. The shim then caps off the upper race, a disc spring follows that, and then a top retaining washer followed by a snap ring. The whole assembly gets preloaded, so it presses that spring down into the ball joint, and then you put the snap ring in and you release the assembly with a predetermined amount of tension on that spring. So what you're left with is a preloaded ball joint. The reason that you want a preloaded ball joint is because every one of our suspension systems are designed to allow your tires to come off the ground. Well, when the tires come off the ground, the unsprung weight's gonna try to pull that ball away from the wear surface. If you've got a spring shoving it back into the wear surface, you're gonna maintain that contact. So it was very important that we did that. The snap ring design is stupid simple. Uh, and then on top of that, we put a seal. We have a machine groove in there and we designed a custom seal to seal the pin to the cup. It snaps into place and then there you go. There's your lower ball joint. So now to wrap a little bit about the upper ball joint. You've got the same process, you've got the same materials, you've got the same durability as you have out of our lower. But this being the floating kingpin design, you're more worried about lateral movement than you are up and down because again, this isn't the load bearing ball joint. This is just the pivot point that allows the knuckle to pivot on the axis of the lower ball joint. So you're not worried about vertical movement. So what we did was we made this thing super bulletproof laterally. You've got one wear surface in a factory ball joint. You've got two wear surfaces in this. We go into more depth on the website with full cutaways where you can see those two wear surfaces. In addition to that, they're serviceable just like the lower. Here you have room to put the Zerk fitting directly on top, so that's exactly what we did. And there's room for a grease reservoir, so we went ahead and put one on. We have relief cuts in the head of the upper ball joint pin that allow grease to pass through. Then we have spiral cuts going down the actual pin of the ball joint so that when you turn, it actually allows that grease to migrate all the way down to the bottom of that pin. So both of those wear surfaces are lubricated. Lastly, you've got a Viton O-ring sealing that pin to the cup on the lower end so that nothing's gonna be coming up through the bottom of that ball joint to get inside and corrode it. So you've got better materials and process to become a more durable ball joint. You've got twice the wear surfaces of a factory ball joint. It's serviceable, it's got a grease reservoir. Everything about this is far more robust than a factory upper ball joint. So it's a lot of cool parts to look at, a lot of cool things to talk about, but what does it mean for you as the end user? Well, let's put it this way. Since 2008, when we began selling these ball joints, we've had less than a 1% failure rate. So let's say that you end up in that less than 1% of customers that has an issue with our ball joints. What happens then? Well, we back them with a lifetime advanced replacement guarantee. That's how confident we are. Even our warranty separates us from everybody else. What that means is if you could submit a purchase receipt via email and shoot a crappy cell phone video of the amount of deflection you've got in those ball joints, we have very trained eyes here. We can see excessive play. We will send you a new set of ball joints. So that means no putting your truck up on a rack, pulling the ball joints out, sending them to a manufacturer so that they can determine what failed, why, and their course of action. We're not that company. We want to minimize the inconvenience on you since you shouldn't be having problems with our ball joints anyway. 
Send us a video, send us the purchase receipt, we'll send you a new set of ball joints with a return shipping label, that's the end of the inconvenience. We market these ball joints as the last set you will ever have to buy and we guarantee them the same way. If you have any issues ever, hit us up direct, we'll help you out. Hit us in the comment section with any questions that you have on this because we cover a lot, but we don't cover everything. We get so many questions on these, we try to hit everything. Uh, but again, the only thing we're really not gonna talk about is the composition, the metallurgy, that type of thing. But we're super responsive in the comment section. We love to talk about this stuff. So hit us with any questions that you've got. Thanks for tuning into another video. We'll catch you on the next one.